today at Fat Boys Garage, and we're going to show you how to do a valve adjustment on an E46 M3. Specifically, that's the S54 engine. This is included in your regular maintenance, and if you want to keep a good running engine, you should be doing this. You're going to need a few special parts and tools. So make sure you get a valve adjustment kit on one of the many websites where they sell them. I leave a part number for the one we used. Okay, we're going to finish up the timing here. We're going to check it. We've been running the valves, making sure they're all in adjustment. So since this engine has cycled over numerous times, it's time for us to check the timing for the final go through. Here's our, our locking pin for the crank. That installs nice and clean all the way in. And after this engine has been cycled, you need to relieve the tension on the chain. You do that with the 24 millimeter wrench on the cam lugs. Just rock it back and forth, take the bind out of the chain, and then come back and check your final timing on the bridge. And E is for intake in German, A is for exhaust in German. So here we go. If it's right, that just slips right in. Here's the exhaust, right all the way in, nice and tight. And you're allowed half a thousandth between the head and the bridge, and there is no gap at all. So this engine is as close to being in time as possible. And we're ready to move on and show you how to adjust valves. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to set valve lash up on an S54 BMW engine. Uh, first thing you wanna do is you wanna cover all of these little grates here with some kind of paper or something, because if you drop one of these little shims or puck, as we call them, you can be very disappointed if it goes down to the band. Now, don't forget about up in the front. There's a small hole up in here that goes to the pan also. You don't want to drop anything down here. So first thing is, plug off all of the oil galleys that go down to the pan and plug up all of the uh, spark plug holes. Do anything going down the cylinder if you have your spark plugs out. And we're going to do this cylinder here because uh, it's the easiest uh, for the, the video. So we're gonna do just the one and I'm gonna show you how to bring it up the top on, on the marks here and I'll show you how to set the, uh, the lash. Okay, to set it up, the first thing you gotta do is bring the cam up to where we have the right lash position. As you can see, the cam right now is riding on the, on the rock arm assembly. That's the rock arm assembly right here and that's the valve in between the rock arm assembly and the valve stem are the uh, shims. And you can see it moving through. We're getting on the back side now of this cam. And you see this greenish oily color here? That's a good sign. That means that you haven't had a tight valve and hasn't been giving you the proper clearance. If this was shiny, like this surface right here on the back side, that means, like so shiny right here, if you saw marks like that on the back side of your cam lobe, that means that the, the valve train has been rubbing against the cam. And that's not a good thing. And we're bringing it up right now to where we're on the back side of the cam lobe. And I, I just place these in a very vertical position with the horizon, not so much with the engine, because the whole back side of that cam lobe is round. And I don't crank the engine backwards very much at all. I try to keep it going forward. And that's why I'm down here on the crank. Uh, to do this properly, you need to remove the fan and the fan shroud to get down here on the crank with a 32 millimeter wrench to turn that engine over properly and turn the engine over clockwise. Okay, we have the cam lobe set in the proper position. So you can see it's kind of vertical here. It's not super critical, but uh, you do need to have the measurement taken off the back side of the cam, which is round, not oblong like this. Oblong like this. And I'm going to show you just a real quick shot here. This is a pass-fail, a go-no-go -no -go system. So I take the, the feeler gauge, which is a 7 thousandths. I start at the cam, and I walk it right down into the area we're trying to measure, right there. And you know you're not, you're not down here, you're in there, right there. That's a pass, 
which is good. And the fail or no go is the nine thousandths. It goes down and it don't go in. That much wiggling right there is all you should have to do. And there it is. That is the no go. So that cam uh, spacer is correct for the setting we want. I always double check. We're looking for eight thousandths and the eight thousandths works real nice. Follow the cam down right inside. I'm gonna show you real quick in a minute how to uh, pull these little pucks out and measure them because you're gonna find some that are too tight, too loose, and you gotta decide whether you're gonna get a thicker a shim or a thinner shim uh, to make your valve adjustment correct. And to do that, the first thing you do is we pull off this little bracket and this little spring clip is what holds the whole world together on this cam system. So we got that pulled off and we take and we slide the rocker arm assembly right here. We slide it over and we'll show you this in a different sequence right there. It's slide it over and there we have it. Now we're ready to remove the puck or remove the shim. A little BMW tool has a magnet right here. We're gonna slide in here. We're gonna pick that little puck up. There it is. And this is why we say, make sure you plug all the holes. You don't want that in your oil pan. Okay. Okay, we pulled the shim out and we decided we needed about a thousandths or two thousandths more uh, thicker shim to make the valve setting correct. So we use a micrometer. Uh, it's a lot more accurate than using a set of calipers. And uh, I won't give you a lesson on micrometers, but they're really easy to work with. Uh, we want two thousandths. This one's measuring 15 right now. So we're gonna pull that out. And this 232 is a shim we have from our kit. So you're gonna need a shim kit if you're gonna do this kind of work. And it measures out right at 17. So this is a shim I'm looking for uh, to make up the difference for wear on the valve stem and the valve train. So we're gonna go put that in real quick. Okay, we have our little shim on our BMW tool. And as you can see, looking inside here, here's a spring retainer, and right here is a valve stem. So this little shim goes right on top of the valve stem. And to install that, we come in with the shim, we put it in the area it fits into, and we just wipe it off. And there it is. I also take the back side of the tool and I make sure it's laying down flat. Right there. Just touch it. Don't wipe it off too hard because you don't want to knock it off into the engine. Then you pick the valve train up and you just slide it over like so. There it is. And now we're ready to check for proper fit. And again, it's a pass fail. Here's seven thousandths. It's a uh, seven thousandths pass on the go, on the intake. And it's a nine thousandths no go on the intake. On the exhaust, uh, it is 11 and 13. And we're gonna double check. We have an eight thousand, which is the number we're looking for and that has some resistance to it. It's a nice fit. And to finish the process up, we take our clip, a little spring clip. This is what holds the whole world together inside this head. Just a little spring clip. And we clip it right down to the bar, the rocker arm bar. And there it is, and that's it. Now to make sure always do this, you want to check and make sure that that little puck is actually there. You didn't knock it out somewhere along the line. So we're going to put a mirror down here. And yes, we can see the puck in there. That shiny little piece of metal be between those two oily brown pieces of metal there. Okay, I'm going to take a feeler gauge and I'm going to show you what you're actually trying to measure right now when you set this up. Down comes the feeler gauge following the cam, there we are, and it slides right in there. And that's what we're measuring. We're measuring the distance between the little puck right 
there. And I'll, I'll pull this out, and now I will show you the, the no, the failed no go. Here's the no go on the rocker arm and cam. Right there, it's a no go. Will not fit. So this valve right here is adjusted correctly. Now that your valves are adjusted, you can go ahead and button up the engine. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.